Hi everyone. Good morning. I'm so excited to be here today um, and moderate this amazing panel we have for you this morning. Um, so welcome to day two of Ant Eater Family Weekend. I hope you've enjoyed everything so far. Uh, so please grab your cup of coffee or whatever your morning beverage might be. Um, Diet Coke's also fine, no judgment. <laughs> um, I'm actually on my second cup of coffee. So just settle in and we have a, an amazing panel for you today. Um, so you might recognize my name. Um, my name is Lauren Walker and I work in the Office of Parent and Family Engagement at UCI. I've been in this role um, for quite some time now and it's just been amazing getting to know um, our amazing students and their families. So thank you for joining us. Um, so this that brings us to this morning's panel. We have a wonderful group for you today which includes alumni across various disciplines as well as an esteemed lawyer and UCI law school lecturer who all know the ins and outs of career development, um, and they can give you a truthful view on how to succeed as an up and coming ant eater. So I will briefly introduce the panelists to you and they will touch more specifically on their areas um, where they work and they just, they have such fascinating stories and they've taken such different routes. So it's just incredible to hear. So let's get started. Uh, I will start with Mona Bassett. She is a UCI alumna who graduated in 1993 with her bachelor's degree in English. Uh, she's currently the vice president of digital services at SCL Health. Mona was also recognized at UCI with, um, with a Lods and Laurels uh, distinction. Um, so she was a distinguished alumni and received that award in 2019. So welcome, Mona. We also have Andrew Green, who is not an alumna, but is absolutely incredible. Uh, she is our lecturer in the UCI School of Law. Um, she graduated from Brown University and then Harvard Law School. She is also a partner emeritus at IRL and Manila, LLP. Next, we have Katie Basile. Uh, she's a double UCI alumna who first graduated from the university in 1980 with a bachelor's degree in biology. And then she has a great story. Um, she, after she declared a German major, um, well, she did that so she could become a fifth year student on UCI's EAP program in Germany. So she graduated with a bachelor's degree in German in 1982. And Katie is currently a partner at Reed Smith Law Firm. So welcome, Katie. And we have Alex McDonald a UCI alumnus who graduated in 2018 with his master's degree in mechanical engineering, and he's currently a program manager at Tesla. Welcome, Alex. And last but certain, certainly not least, we have uh, Kelly Galligan. She's a UCI alumna who graduated with her JD in 2015 from the UCI School of Law, and she currently serves as an associate at Rutan and Tucker LLP. So welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. This is our amazing panel. Um, so let's just jump in and we could start off um, just doing a brief overview of your role and what that looks like typically in your day to day. Um, so Mona, would you like to kick it off? Sure, I'm happy to. Hi everybody, so great to be here with you. I am the Vice President of Digital Services at a not-for-profit healthcare system in Denver, Colorado, and my role is in the technology organization, and my team focuses on consumer engagement technologies, so everything from our consumer apps to our website, to our internet sites, chatbots, our Salesforce practice, and really anything that we do that helps engage our patients and our consumers. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. And Katie, let's hop over to you. Sure. Good morning, everybody. I, um, uh, I'm a partner at Reed Smith, and uh, I'm in the Silicon Valley office. I'm a trademark and brands attorney. So I help uh, companies when they are trying to identify a new trademark. I take them through the clearance process. Uh, we do this on a worldwide basis. I'm also started out as a complex commercial litigator. So I also um, to help clients defend um, themselves or defend, um, bring enforcement actions for their trademarks in both federal court and the trademark trial and appeal board. Wow, thank you. Uh, Andrew, let's go to you. 
Hi, everybody. Really happy to be here. I am a partner emeritus, which means I have uh, retired from the firm. I'm at Irella Manella in here in Newport Beach, where I've spent the last 35 years. I was a trial lawyer from day one, and I still handle cases because I love to be in the courtroom. I have uh, handled complex litigation cases throughout my career, generally big companies suing other big companies for lots of money, but there are always lots of interesting legal issues. I was the managing partner of my firm, so I got to herd a lot of cats for a number of years. Mm -hmm. But my dream was always to be a teacher. So I got to fulfill that starting uh, second semester of 2020, a very uh, remarkable year here at UCI Law School where I teach an advanced seminar in class actions. And I'm doing that again this year and I love it. That's really what I probably should have done, but it's a great way to round out my career. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that you got to do what you love. Um, sounds like your whole career. <laughs> um, let's hop over to Kelly. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. I am a corporate and mergers and acquisitions attorney at Rattan and Tucker. Um, Rattan is Orange County's largest full service law firm. Um, as Lauren mentioned, I graduated from UCI Law, loved my experience there. And now I spend my days representing private companies, helping them grow their business, raise money, buy and sell other companies. Um, it's a ton of fun. Entrepreneurs every day. Great. Thank you. And Alex. Hey, Alex here with Tesla. Um, uh, I'm a program manager at Tesla. I manage um, most of what gets built in the LA area uh, for what we call our supercharger network. Um, in layman's terms, that's uh, electric gas stations. Um, but you have to bring to bear um, a large amount of commercial power, almost the size of, um, say, like a mall. Uh, it's quite a lot of power, so there's a lot of coordination with utilities, uh, with local agencies. And just to understand, I suppose, the, the impact uh, locally uh, most of the air pollution um, here in Southern California comes uh, either from the ports or from uh, transportation. And so us electrifying our fleet here in California, especially LA, uh, where there's a lot of vehicles, uh, leads to, to a very, very big impact locally, um, in addition to climate change concerns, et cetera. Um, and I also, I also maintain a background in um, uh, mechanical engineering and uh, uh, political science with the folks in economics as well. And I've worked both in politics and engineering. Um, so happy to be here and uh, good morning. Yeah, thank you so much. You all have such diverse backgrounds. It's, it's incredible. <laughs> Thank you. So I know a topic that has been coming up a lot with students recently is um, there's sort of an uncertainty or they feel uncertain about what their career projection will look like due to the pandemic. Um, do you mind touching on what your job looks like now and how the pandemic has affected your um, specific area? Um, Katie, you could start us off me to do so. So in some ways, um, the pandemic had, well, the biggest way the pandemic affected our actual offices is that we, we all, like everybody else, moved to working from home. And so um, for many, you know, so, so that's, that's been a big shift and, and it's, um, and it's challenging in the, in the legal profession, or at least working in a law firm, um, and that we, we do do a lot of talking to each other in the office and, and, um, and meeting clients and, and going to court and things like that, which we've always done in person. And we're now doing all of that online. And as many of you can appreciate for some of us lawyers, we've all now learned how to use Zoom appropriately and, and several other platforms, including this one. Uh, it's, it's also, um, it hasn't, interestingly enough, um, I work for a lot of large companies as well, and um, they're, they're pretty busy. And so our work has been busy and we have continued, for example, with our summer associate programs. We um, Reed Smith is a very large law firm. We have a summer associate program um, working with law schools uh, for students to come in and then become associates and, and that we took online and we have continued. So I would say in many ways there hasn't been a large change. Where there has been some changes in our pro bono work. We do do a fair amount of pro bono work and um, we have a lot of, um, you know, a lot of pro bono clients now who, who have a lot of issues that they didn't have before the pandemic. So that's also been an increase in work. Uh, ranging from you know helping individuals with their um, it, you know their housing or, and also our immigration work. So um, 
Uh, so I'll stop there. But yeah, that's I think. Thank you. Sounds busy. <laughs> so, um, Mona, we can just go in the little square order. So, Mona. I will tell you that working for a health system, our lives were completely changed with COVID. And certainly, you know, as as a multi hospital system and clinics, we had to be sure, obviously, that we were ready to handle any patients that were coming into our hospitals. And being on the technology side, there is a lot of stuff that happens behind the scenes, everything from our electronic uh, health record to how we communicate with our patients. Uh, I think two, I would say two good things that came out of this whole experience. One is that we were able to accelerate a lot of digital initiatives that we had sort of been talking about and maybe weren't very slow, weren't very fast to really come on board. You think about doing video visits with patients, doing e-visits, and really moving that whole patient experience to the virtual world. We used to have probably under 100 video visits before the pandemic, and the next month we had like 11,000 in that month. And so that brought things on board very, very quickly, which is fantastic. We brought in a lot of other technologies too to help with all the management. We introduced a couple of chatbots to screen for COVID, to screen our associates. So things that we had been wanting to do, we were able to do very, very quickly. And then I think the other thing is that because most of our sort of corporate or enterprise uh, support jobs were sent home, most of the staff is is remote now. Uh, obviously, the hospital staff is not, but any support services, things like that are, are remote. And it really enabled us to hire people from across the country when before we really focused on you know the Denver area. And we also have some facilities in Montana as well. But now we can look across the nation for the best person for the role. Wow, thank you. I think that is a great point that students should keep in mind. I mean, location might not necessarily be a you know tying factor they're not tied down maybe to a certain area just because of where they live so thank you and andrea let's go to you um like catherine my firm has been virtual for the last year and what's been surprising and i think will change the way law is practiced uh, going forward it's worked exceedingly well people have adapted uh, we do miss the day-to-day, -day, face to face interaction, but a lot can be done on Zoom and people really can work from anywhere. Also, I found that court proceedings, with the exception of trials, are extremely efficient when you're doing them over Zoom. Uh, a few weeks ago, I had a court appearance in Los Angeles Superior Court. The actual appearance took 15 minutes. So I could do that from this same desk that you see, didn't have to drive to LA, didn't have to wait, didn't have to come back. Otherwise that would have been three hours of my time. So I think you're gonna see a lot more use of that kind of technology. And in terms of the legal profession in general, the litigation has exploded. There are all kinds of new and very interesting lawsuits that have arisen out of COVID. So it's a very interesting time to be a lawyer. And from the side of remote learning, I've seen a great difference between uh, what it was like to teach uh, spring semester 2020 and what it's like to teach now. UCI Law School has been extremely nimble in creating a very excellent virtual law school. Uh, it devotes a lot of resources to teaching us, the faculty, how to bring students uh, the most that we can through this uh, remote environment. So the pandemic has really brought many things forward, I think, in all professions. Yeah, thank you, I agree. I didn't even think about um, the increase in lawsuits and things like that. So that does that didn't come to mind. So thank you for bringing that up. And Kelly, let's go to you. Yeah, you know, my experience is very similar to um, what Katie and Andrew are seeing. Um, it's kind of fun being in private company m &A because I don't specialize in a specific industry. I work with private companies in, in every sector. Um, so I feel like I get a really good taste of, you know, private company business the, uh, markets. And in March, um, things got a little scary. I think, you know, any deal I was on shut down immediately. 
but within two or three weeks, all the deals were back on. And in fact, we've had um, a really hot year as well. M&A has been really hot. I think people are just eager to get the economy going again and, you know, um, to increase deal flow. So we've actually seen a lot of work. Um, so that's been awesome. And it's fun to see uh, see private companies doing well in Orange County. That's um, that's always really good to see. And I also wanted to mention that, um, you know, for the younger generation, it's it, for me included, it's, it's really important for us to have a lot of autonomy and flexibility in our jobs. And I think the pandemic has done wonders in terms of allowing us to have that. There are so many partners who I, you know, who I work with and they've worked at their desks for 50 years and every day, Monday through Friday, they are at their desk and they were forced to go remote. And now so many of them are saying they will never go back to five days in the office. It's, I think people are realizing it's doable. Um, and I think maybe the younger generation knew it. Um, and it took a little bit of, you know, being forced into it to kind of make, make that change happen. But I, I think, you know, the pandemic was obviously unfortunate in so many ways, but there are some, some good things that came out of it. And that's one of them. I think people will see a little bit more flexibility with their jobs going forward. Thank you. I definitely agree. Um, it brings a, a more work-life balance, I think, too. Like Andrew mentioned, not having to sit in traffic or things like that. I feel like you can actually get more done. Um, so thank you. And Alex, let's go to you. Yeah, um, so like a lot of the technology companies, we were already working remote where it made sense, uh, myself included. Um, so I think by and large, uh, we've been, uh, I've been able to avoid having to become a cat, Zoom lawyer joke. Um, but uh, so, so we are, we, you know, we were already uh, familiar with all of that and able to pivot. Um, uh, some things got easier. So a lot of um, uh, government agencies were still, you know, uh, needed hard copies. So like when we would go to permit uh, projects, for example, and, and uh, they pivoted very quickly to digital and online um, platforms uh, or even just email um, before we'd have to print out the large construction drawings and have an uh, engineer stamp and, and physically deliver them. Um, and so it saved a lot of time and bandwidth, I think, in that sense. I would say, though, um, uh, and this is probably you know more germane to, to, to those on the call, uh, one of the challenges um, has not only been the, the cabin fever, right, that I think a lot of people have experienced, um, uh, but also I think as you grow younger, uh, there's there's challenges associated with networking, ex especially professionally. Uh, for myself, I, I was very active in that, um, and I found that that's helped me in my career. Um, and, and a large part of that has been effectively cut off, I think, owing to the pandemic. And I think that that would be, um, I, I imagine or suspect at least a challenge for those newly coming into the space professionally, um, how, to, how to meet people in, in your relative field um, uh, and how to network and grow and, and help each other succeed in, in that arena. So certainly something I, I very much noticed in, in part of that cabin fever is, you know, not being able to go out and interact with people um, perhaps as we uh, once did. So thank you. Hi, thank you. I, I definitely agree. Um, and so you all have such a different skill set, um, but you're all just so good at your craft and what you do. Do you mind talking about what's, um, what skills you learned um, while you were in school and how students can work on themselves now to be successful in the future? Um, Katie, let's start with you. Okay, thanks. Um, and I, I actually just really quickly want to echo what Alex said, because as much as we've been very positive about it, the pandemic has been challenging in, in, in ways like that. And in fact, I find that I actually sit at my desk longer hours because it's here in the house and, and have to learn from, from I think folks like Alex who are already working at home, um, you know, how to, how, to, how to build in some boundaries. And I imagine for the student, for all of you students, it's been, it's been equally hard. And so um, I, I think I kind of want you to take encouragement from the fact that there have been positive things in, about it, um, but don't want you to feel like, oh, everything's positive and I'm the only one who feels like it's negative. Because I think as Alex pointed out, it, it actually is affecting all of us and we're trying to do the best we can, including with the networking um, as much as possible, which is challenging. As for the question you asked me, which I think was what did I, um, what skills did I get in school? Um, uh, I have to say that um, for me personally, a lot of it had to do with my, um, with two things. One was like the EAP program and, and, and um, having to navigate 
uh, working both with the university and then a different culture and getting to know people in a different environment. That, that skill has served me well over, over my career and, and over my life. And the other thing for me that made a big difference was learning biology. Uh, learning how to think like a scientist, even though at the end of the day, I decided not to remain a biologist and chose to go into law and then didn't didn't do the classic, you know, patent side of the house, did did other um, other other areas. Uh, learning to think, um, learning to critically think was 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 really important. And, and I think and I found that and I found that in biology, but I'm, I know you find it in every, you know, in, in every field. Um, uh, at the university, so that those those were the two things. And in terms of, you know, I I feel like from it's hard to say. I I came out of law school. I mean, I came out of UC Irvine not knowing what I wanted to do. So it's hard for me to say, oh well, you should work on this or you should work on that because I I had no idea and 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 settled on law for a variety of reasons, not ever intending to be a lawyer even. And yet here I am, a lawyer all these years later. And um, and yet I, I raised four kids and and a couple of them knew from the moment I swear the moment they they could say what they wanted to do and they were very but very directed on their path and um, so so if you're one of those people you know the most I could say was was to you know to, to think ahead about about the opportunities that and and the path you want to take but I really feel learning to think critically and then having those opportunities to get to know other people and find different ways, whether it's joining a club or an organization or any, you know, when the pandemic is over, um, those are the kinds of things that I found helpful. Thank you very much. Mona? I think, you know, certainly the, the university experience is really designed to allow you to dabble and think about what you might want to do. I think I changed my major maybe three times <laughs> my first year. And then when I settled on being an English major, um, I'm the daughter of two chemists and they were not quite sure that I would actually find a job being an English major uh, and the daughter of two scientists. But I think what I really learned at UC Irvine is that you know the the major obviously pick something that you enjoy pick pick something that you think that you'll be able to do something with but i think the important part is that uc irvine really taught me how to think how to be curious how to ask questions and most importantly how to figure things out i interview countless numbers of people who just can't think that way and, you know, especially being in a lot of creative fields and technology fields, things change every single day. And if you are not willing to, to really try to figure stuff out, learn every day, uh, then you probably won't be very successful. So use UC Irvine to be able to do that. And again, I think it's a very rare thing. I, I don't see it a lot. You don't come into jobs these days and sort of get the checklist of, you know, here's what you're supposed to do every day it's ever changing. So the more you can focus on that, the better. And then I think the other thing that really helped me and you have a, a good opportunity to do it, maybe a little bit less these days, but uh, everybody's creative, but really just get involved with all kinds of things. So whether it is, you know, going abroad or, you know, anything else, I was involved in the, in the uh, summer orientation program. So I was a staffer and I did countless other things on campus. And I think all of those experiences really impact who you are and how you can really bring all of these amazing abilities and, and, and initiative and just creative thinking to, to the jobs you do. Uh, for me, that was really important because I did a lot of different things in my career. I started uh, my career, sort of my first corporate job as a technical writer. I uh, ended up going into communications and marketing moved over to brand management, moved to digital marketing, and then ended up in technology. And who would have thought that, you know, an English major would end up in technology? And it's an amazing place to be. And I think the only way I could have done that was to be able to be open to learn and try new things and just figure it out. I love that. Thank you. It, so it sounds like there's um, a theme here where, you know, just be open. Students, if you don't know what you want to do, that's fine. Just obviously you'll find your path, even if you might end up somewhere where you don't, you didn't expect. Um, so thank you. Andrea, would you like to add anything? Have fun in college. Enjoy the people 
try different things. You will never get that opportunity again. I, I, it breaks my heart when I see students in college who are just thinking about what do I need to do to get that job? And they're missing the best four years of their lives. Obviously, don't flunk out. Uh, take courses, try new things, but you may find that something really excites your passion that you had no idea about. I changed my major like 20 times in college, finally ended up as an economics major, but I always knew I wanted to be a lawyer. But what I remember about college is not, not my courses, thank you. Thankfully, I was able to get a degree and go on to law school, but I remember the people, I remember the activities, and that's, don't miss out on those. But the one skill uh, that I found to be most beneficial for my career was writing, work on writing. There are many ways you can do that, but your courses will uh present an opportunity for you to work on that skill, which will help you not only as a lawyer, but in any field that you choose. Thank you. I think sometimes, well, I know when I was in college, I would kind of forget to have fun. You know, you get stressed out and um, you get so into the thick of it. So you forget, you know, this is such a short time in your life. Enjoy it. Um, so I, th I think that's great you brought that up have fun and honestly just make great memories but remember why you're there so i i, I love that andrew thank you kelly would you like to add anything yeah yeah i love that advice too um i mean i think it is really important to be curious and to um try different courses and kind of learn what you love um and it's not it's not like you know if you decide to take biology classes and you end up becoming a, a brand attorney like it's not like you're 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 still headed in the right direction. You're still learning really valuable skills that'll help you in your career. Um, you know, you didn't hear Katie say, I took these really great classes on branding and now because of those courses, I'm a great brand attorney. Um, it's all about taking courses that help you develop as a person. And it can be, it can be in like so many different things and everyone's path is gonna be different. So I completely, I love the advice you guys are giving about, you know, exploring and finding something that just fits your passion because if you enjoy it, um, you're gonna care more, you're gonna do well, you're gonna really, um, you know, embrace the class and really learn a lot from that class. So I love that advice. And I, you know, when I, when we initially got these questions, I was gonna talk about, you know, the importance of learning to think critically too. But I think Katie and Mona already, you know, said great things about being curious and thinking critically. So I don't need to harp on that again. I think you guys have already given some awesome advice. Thank you so much. And Alex? Yeah, um, I would say so um, uh, networking uh, continues, I think, to be a, a very important thing. Um, and, and maybe I'll touch on some like high level themes and then and explain a little bit as I get, get into it. But um, I think a large part of your success is, is owed to your personal network and more so instead of getting to know people already in industry, which is certainly helpful, but maintaining relationships with who you go to school with now, um, especially those who you meet are, who are hungry and, and, and aggressive and ambitious. Uh, you can help each other succeed going, you know, after you get out of this program. Um, and I, I think maintaining those relationships, both on a personal note, but also on a professional note has been really helpful to me. Um, I think planning for op opportunity and also understanding uh, the the value and in integrated study um, is is also really helpful and impactful. Uh, like many of my other colleagues here on the call, I went jumped all all around. I, I when I was young, I was very interested in renewables. Then I had a uh, for many years in high school, I thought I wanted to do a video game um, uh, or uh, make video games. Um, and then I went to business law, uh, for a little bit, uh, even got interested in patent law for a little while. Then I went to English and then, um, uh, and I, I also had a separate interest in, in politics. By the time I went through all of that as an undergrad, uh, I ultimately pivoted back to mechanical engineering owing to the impact I wanted to have on the world. But I had so many liberal arts credits, I thought I might as well just get a degree um, mm -hmm. as a result anyway in that arena as well. Uh, as an undergrad, I did engineers at our borders, went overseas, worked on a water project in Kenya. Um, and then worked in industry, both politics and then commercial and industrial, Intel, Boeing, US Navy, Seattle Public Schools, very big projects. Um, and then came back to graduate school uh, and continued in that same vein, 
Uh, I think the, the paraphrase, you know, Tom Sawyer, don't don't let your education get in the way of your learning. Um, at, at UC Irvine, I ran this program called Solar Decathlon, where we had to design and build a solar powered house that you could take apart and reassemble on site in less than two weeks. Uh, and this was hosted by the Department of Energy, it was global. I raised uh, over a million dollars and managed 100 students across four schools, Chapman, UCI, I IBC, Saddleback, et cetera, to bring all that together and built this integrated team. And we competed and took second place in engineering. And it was a fantastic experience. Um, and, and so the classroom is only half of, of the equation here. Um, I, I guess when you're looking at your opportunity in university, and I would say really embrace this as an uh, intellectual playground. And even though a lot of this stuff is remote owing to COVID. There are still a lot of opportunities to engage. Um, so the Cathlon, for example, continues in a design capacity. Uh, and I still mentor students from across the, the, the nation on Sorta Cathlon design of various teams. I think I'm uh, mentoring four right now. Um, and so even diving into the design of it, and even though a lot of it's still now over webcam at this immediate moment, um, having to apply those skills that you pick up in the classroom is a different level of thinking that I think um, more adequately, and or not, I wouldn't say necessarily more adequately, adequately, but um, uh, accentuates the learning that you get in the classroom. Um, and I think that it, it's really important to jump all, all over those opportunities here uh, at university. So, yeah. Thank you. That's amazing. <laughs> Your journey is so interesting. I I love hearing about it, and I think. Um, you nailed it. Your outside um, hands-on knowledge and experiences definitely complement what you learn in the classroom. So that is very important uh, for students to en engage in. So we have about eight minutes left. Um, so I just want to open it up to the panelists. If you have any advice or anything that you feel you should mention that hasn't been discussed already. And um, Everyone, please feel free to use the live Q&A function and um, enter some questions if you have any. I think one other piece of advice I would give, you know, as, as you get more experience in, in your career and, and later in your career, you read a lot of things about how to say no. You know, balance your schedule, don't take on too much, have time for yourself, which I think is great advice. But I think you should actually be doing the opposite when you're earlier in your career and to say yes to just about everything, any chance to learn, any chance to get an experience, just say yes to it. So when you're in at UCI, say yes to different organizations, different opportunities, different classes, different ways of thinking. When you get to that first job, say yes to all of the different projects that might come your way. Maybe you work on a new project that you had not been involved with previously. Maybe you head up the, you know, the, the social uh, club at your organization or your office, but just say yes to everything at the beginning. That, that would be my advice because that's really the time to learn and, and you do have a little more time to do that. I like that. And in addition to, you know, it helping you grow in terms of, you know, being really good at your job, I think you can also say yes to um, personal and social opportunities that are also really important. Um, I know Alex has made some really great points about the importance of growing your personal network. But I mean, I think if you join an intramural team, maybe maybe if you're a little bit shy and you haven't met anyone yet, obviously, when whenever intramurals happen again, um, but but experiences like that will really help you connect with um, with people on a different level and you'll have those relationships forever. And um, in addition to, you know, the skills that you're learning to be good at your job, the relationships are incredibly important and people can't take you, take those away from you. And, you know, you don't necessarily know exactly where, what path your career is going to take, but those relationships will, will surprise you and they'll come in handy. Um, and also it's, it makes your experience a little bit more enjoyable when you have friends to do things with. So. So, Thank you, Kevin. I, I was just going to jump in on on the point on the point about just now, um, and you don't know what path your career is going to take. And in some ways, you don't know what path your life is going to take. And so, you know, I, I think I think there's a lot to be said for planning. And there are people who are planners, and then there are people like me who are not planners and who feel like at some level life happens to at them or to them. And but you, but but I think flexibility. Um, I think that's what you're hearing here, too, is flexibility. I mean, throughout my career, when I had different opportunities, I went ahead and took them. I was in private practice, then I worked in-house. I worked at Levi's and then at Intel, two very different companies, and then went back into private practice. And I, 
you know, th those are changes. I mean, today I think actually a lot of a lot of young people make those changes much more readily than than maybe they, you know, it, we, I was making them 30, 32 years, three, four years ago. But I, um, I, I think being open, being open to considering different things is really important. And and you and as much planning as you do, you just don't know where your life is going to take you. So I I would encourage you not to stress about that right now. I think I think it's really more about um, about having having exposure, which is what I think you're hearing from all of us. Thank you, Katie. And we actually have some questions that came through. Um, so Andrea, this is specifically for you. Um, do you have advice for young women interested in law and how can they advocate for themselves to have a path to leadership? Uh, that's a great question. I think uh, there isn't a better time to be a woman in the legal field. Um, in the dark ages when I practiced, I'd be the only one and people actually asked me when I was pregnant, uh, are you coming back to work? Which of course is illegal, but you know, they wondered because no one had done it. The world's totally different now and uh, law firms and organizations want to advance not only women, but people of color because they recognize that's the world we live in. That's what our clients are. That's what they want. So um, my advice is uh, don't sell yourself short or don't think um, that it's not open to you. It may be uh, more challenging, but find mentors. Um, believe in yourself and take those opportunities. I mean, my colleagues saw leadership capabilities in me before I did, and they were they were all men at the time, and they helped groom me and and teach me that uh, I could do it. And uh, so I encourage um, people when you find a position, find mentors, believe in yourself, and also. Uh, work on skills that are good for leadership. Um, but I think that gender these days is not, it, you know, it's not a disadvantage. Thank you so much. I agree. I, I can't believe they asked you that. <laughs> but I, I love that you're like, of course I'm coming back. Are you crazy? <laughs> okay. We actually have, um, we have about two minutes left, but some questions have come through for Alex. Um, so if you want to touch on those really quick, um, Alex, what's your biggest tip for internships in STEM? Um, okay, so uh, uh, two things. First, um, just to touch on some earlier points, as you say yes, uh, you learn what you don't like, and sometimes it's easier to start um, to, to figure out what you don't like versus figuring out what you do like, right? And as you get older, perhaps that list gets longer. So start there if you don't know exactly what you want to do. Now, the other thing I would say is prepare for um, opportunity, right? Um, and because you can plan all you want, but uh, you know the winds uh, of time change and and. Uh, so with respect to internships then, uh, and Jermaine to the, to the question at hand, go online, look at job descriptions, take a look at the underlying or repeated themes as far as what skill sets they're looking for and experiences, either be it um, you know, not only the degree itself, the programs they want you to know, say SolidWorks, ANSYS, Python programming, et cetera. They'll, you'll see a, re a repeat, especially in the fields of interest that you're looking for, and start catalog cataloging those skill sets that they are looking for. And as you go through school, start collecting or diving deep into it. Uh, the classroom may not give you all, all of that, um, but the opportunities available at university will often allow you to explore and dive into that. So by the time you do leave the program, uh, you have those skill sets ready. Um, so I would suggest there. The other thing is um, uh, accept rejection, right? Uh, you get a lot of no's. I continue to get a lot of no's. I've gotten lots and lots of no's in my life. And so sometimes it's even somewhat of a numbers game uh, in addition to that network, right? So if at first you don't succeed, try and try again. And I think um, uh, perseverance is, is a large part of that success. And get creative, go on LinkedIn, um, try to find people, alumni, et cetera, reach out to them, ask them what their experiences are um, and what they are looking for. Uh, and that can perhaps help prepare you or set you up to succeed as you do apply for those internships. Or maybe they can even refer you and you can get through this automated stack of review um, and, and set you up to succeed in that STEM field. So good luck. 
That was great. And thank you so much. We have about 30 seconds and the session just automatically shuts off. <laughs> so I just want to thank all of our panelists. Thank you everyone for joining. Great questions. I hope this helped you. Um, I know I feel inspired just by hearing from them. So thank you. Any last words, panelists? We have 10 seconds. Tesla, I want Alex's job. <laughs> Good luck, everybody. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Pleasure. Good luck with thanks, everything. Everybody.